Hey guys, I made a wreath from a cake pan because it was pink and it's pretty and it made me happy. <laughs> I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and thank you for joining me today. So what I did was, um, complete transparency here, I bought this cake pan probably four or five years ago because it was pink and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to make it into a wreath. It says here, spring form pan. So all wonderful thoughts of cheesecakes and anything else that goes in a spring form pan. Now, I don't believe I paid $7.99 for that, but this is a very heavy, thick, non-stick pan. It's super pretty. And then also what we're gonna start with is we're gonna use this 11 foot um, length of nautical rope from Dollar Tree. It's the cotton one. Um, this, I mean, the sticker came off so easy because that's how long I've had it. Don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> this is a very heavy duty, nice, nice pin. Like I should have kept it and used it, but I actually don't make things that require spring form pans. I purchase things that require spring form pans. Like my, um, cooking abilities go as far as like, you know, cookies and sometimes a box cake, but we won't go there. <laughs> this pan is pink and pretty and I loved it. And I knew I wanted to make it a home decor item, which again, if you put other things in here, you could use this in your kitchen, make, you know, make another kitchen decor item or anywhere else. I, I technically have it on um, a pantry door right now, but I also felt like since this was still kind of Valentine's -y time, the pink color is really pretty. So my idea here was, um, here I'm showing you, I have to cut the rope because I'm actually talking through all of this. I have to cut the rope. So I took some packing tape, I made it really wide and then you cut the two pieces there and then it keeps your rope from unraveling on you should you not want that to happen. Now I'm also gonna leave the plastic on the two ends so that doesn't do that while I um, attach it. So I'm going to make the hanger for this ring, this spring form out of the nautical rope. I'm gonna wrap it around the edge of the pan. Now I'm gonna show you later why that was the wrong thing to do. So with a combination of E6000 and hot glue, we will also discover that hot glue does not like non-stick metal pans. Now we all say use the hot glue for a temporary hold and then E6000 or whatever you else, you know, you might, excuse me guys, sorry, whatever else you use uh, for a permanent hold. But this, this, particular pan did not like hot glue whatsoever. It literally wasn't even holding temporarily. So I put my E6000 on here. Now this particular instance, I had to have patience to let the E6000 work, but I, it only worked minimally. I ended up having to use my star bond and the accelerator. And here's where I waited. I set things, I let it set for about a day. I came back to it. That particularly worked, but this particular ring around the front edge won't work. And I'll show you at the end why it didn't work and we ended up having to add another ring towards the back of the pan. So now I'm going to take a block of styrofoam that I got at Dollar Tree. Um, I'm loving Dollar Tree for the styrofoam because it's affordable. $1.25 is still a decent price for a block of styrofoam. Uh, for where I'm at, I'm on the West Coast. For some reason, styrofoam costs an arm and a leg, your firstborn, and then an additional tire from your car for some reason. <laughs> you guys, I don't know, is that is that normal where you are? Because where I'm at, I'm in Las Vegas on the, on the West Coast, styrofoam is basically made of gold for some reason. So I get all my styrofoam from Dollar Tree if I can. If they have it in stock, I get it there. So I'm gonna cut this in half and I kind of curve the bottom of it so it kind of forms to the shape of the bottom of our pan because that's where I'm going to put the arrangement for our wreath. So I'm using the same combination of wood glue, not wood glue. That's such a that's such a habit to say wood glue and hot glue. This is E6000 and hot glue. And you'll also see here while well, I'm halfway through making this. Now with the magic of editing, I did let this sit for a while after I put the Spanish moss on and um, it still wasn't enough because again, E6000 takes 24 hours and I do not have the mental capacity to wait that long when I want to make something pretty. <laughs> Am I the only one who's impatient? I want it to be pretty and I want it to be pretty now. I don't want to wait a, a, a day to make it. So I think I only waited like 30 minutes before I started doing this, but you guys will see what happens. And then again, star bun came to my rescue. The accelerator is awesome. So I will show you exactly how we do that. Also, um, I mentioned before I didn't have star bun. It's in my Amazon shop if you wanted to buy it. Uh, and that's linked in my description below and also the pinned comment. But um, these are just a, a plethora of um, extras I've had in my stash. There's a bundles from Dollar Tree, bundles of used from uh, Michaels. This here is a bundle I got from Amazon of peonies and I love them. Also, I've noticed I say peony and some people say peony. How, how do you guys say it? I say peony, they're peonies, pretty pink peonies. Well, these are white. 
but I thought these were great for spring, great for Valentine's Day, and I am rushing the season so much, but I want spring to be here. Crafting for spring, it makes me so happy. The bright greens, the bright flowers. This, we have some muted tones here, but for this, I'm using a Dusty Miller plant. You can see there, it popped off. See, there's what I was talking about. This styrofoam popped off on me. I put a little bit more hot glue and it stuck for a little bit. These Dusty Miller I got at Michael's, they didn't want to pull in there, so I had to get my pick machine out and turn them into threatening shivs in order to get them to stay in the styrofoam. If you do not have a pick machine because they are not exactly affordable, it's about $200 or about 170 something if I'm for, if I'm not mistaken. I got it for Christmas a couple years ago. If you've been with me long enough, you'll know when I got my pick machine, I was so happy. I was a happy little crafting lady. Um, that was a Christmas present, but um, Michael's, not Michael's, it was a Hobby Lobby present. We could use a 40% off coupon on it, but it was still a decent investment. Uh, you can just use a stick and some, some floral tape to add to the end of each of your stems. It's the old fashioned way or the the, the the more difficult way, but um, the chip pick machine is, is, a, is a dream for floral arrangements. Now this little bundle here is something I actually pulled apart and then zip tied back together because I ended up not using it, but I love these little soft pinks and these soft creams and white flowers and little tea roses and stuff. I just love adding things in. This right here is like my favorite part of an arrangement. You could also use this cake pan as like a cake stand and then maybe glue a candlestick to the bottom of it and then fill the top up as an actual arrangement. But I wanted this to hang on the wall because I love the color of that pan and I felt it would look great on a door. It needed to be at eye level so everyone could experience it. Um, also, I really enjoyed adding those little pink cattails. I got those cattails at Dollar Tree last year for last spring. I do not know if they have them this year because my Dollar Trees do not have their spring stuff out yet, but we will keep an eye out this year for them because I think they look great. See? Now, again, here's where my glue, again, failed me. I am not being easy on this arrangement either, guys. I'm, you know, decently rough on my items when I'm pushing the stems into the star foam. So here I'm using the accelerator on the star bond glue that I'd already put on there. I'm holding that, I counted literally two minutes. I cut some of it out with editing, but this right here, that stuff's a lifesaver on this project. It's also used on the rope on the outside as well. The, I used a medium, the medium thickness. I didn't use the thick one, I used the medium adhesive and then an accelerator and it worked like a dream. Anything that doesn't like hot glue or anything else that you use, Starbun has worked for me, glass, metal, of course, plastics. And in this instance, this was a cotton rope on the metal, but I think it's the non-stick portion of this pan that was giving me mostly the problem. But I won, I won in the end, I got to say domino, let me tell you guys, but it was a struggle. And I had so much glue on my fingers. I was filing my fingers, <laughs> not my fingernails, my fingers to get that glue off my fingers. It's my own fault, I should have been, should have been wearing gloves, but. I wanted to put a little bit of ribbon in here. So this is just an extra piece of ribbon that I had from, I got at Michael's a, a while ago. Um, I felt that the, the, the lace edging was very soft and feminine and it went well with the little dusty pink theme we were doing. So what I've done here is I've just kind of gathered it in the middle and I'm gonna use a skewer or a stick or a stem or something and I'm gonna press it into the styrofoam. So I'm turning it into its own pick. I didn't have to put anything on there. Now I will pull that out and put some glue in there or at least put glue in it with the gun, my glue gun later um, at, a later, at a later time. But I did put three of them in here so I kind of spread them out at the bottom and then you'll see me take that one out and then kind of reapply it. But I did put three in in the same fashion. See this one I'm liking better. I'm just taking the end of a skewer and I'm finding an open spot and I am pushing it through the middle of the ribbon into the styrofoam. If that makes sense, I hopefully it does. And I did that three times and you'll see me here adjusting it just to have a little bit of the cute lacy burlap ribbon poking out. And I think the arrangement's starting to look a little bit too big, but I love it. Now here's the main problem. I went to go hang it up to test it because I thought I was done. This is not right. <laughs> this does not hang the way I envisioned it. So this is where we have, we have a beautiful vision in our heads, but this is like, wah, wah. this isn't supposed to hang this way. So I'm like, what is wrong here? Let me go film it. So this is my hallway in my house, but this is what I want. Perfect. This is what I got. <laughs> so I'm like, what's wrong here? So again, wrong way, right way. I like this. I don't like this. <laughs> so back to the craft room. Yeah, correct? Not correct. Yeah, I had to do it like five times just to make sure. I'm like, yeah, Whitney, what did you do? 
So back to the craft room. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this outside loop that we originally put on. So this is the hanger still, the one we put at the front edge of our pan. I'm going to just glue this down and then use the extra piece here and kind of cinch it in the middle like this and turn it into its own little bow. That is the best way I could figure out how to fix my little blunder. Uh, because apparently what I should have done is I should have tested hanging it before I put the arrangement in. But I wasn't thinking, and I was thinking, oh, you know, this is going to be perfect. Not thinking that balancing is going to be an issue. Sometimes when you're hanging wreaths, they um, they just don't hang right. You know, your balance could be off, especially if you want something off to the left or the right. Or, you know, you're putting something asymmetrical. It really does play a role in how you hang your item as well. Like a lot of those very popular ring wreaths, you know, they don't hang right if you want them on the left. Mainly that stuff ends up in the bottom when I've made them. Now here I'm taking uh, just what's left of some jute that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it around the middle here. But what I had to do is I had to just get this twisted around the middle of the rope where we're gonna make our bow loops. And then as I was gluing it down underneath, I could then pull each end of the loop and I'll show you here, I'm pulling the loops to kind of get it really you know, tighter and close to the actual uh, pan form. So I'm gonna stand it up and then you'll see me pull pull the actual loops there, there, and I'm making it tighter up against the pan. I'm gonna glue the rest of the rope down on each side. Now that is hot glue, but again, that's temporary. And for what I'm doing, I'm not gonna mess with it. So then I can cinch the middle of our bow in, a little bit more hot glue to hold it, cinch the middle of the bow. So that way we've got an actual bow and the burlap jute looks really, really pretty with it. So. And here I'm adding the star bond around the top edges. I'm really saturating the rope, making sure it gets between the rope and the pan. And that's basically how we're going to make sure that that stays that way. Again, with the accelerator, it was immediate and I love it. You don't have to have the accelerator, but the accelerator makes it like less than 10 seconds. Without it, you're looking at like maybe 30 to 60 seconds. You actually have to have a little bit more patience, but that accelerator is is actually a must have in my opinion for a lot of the a lot of the stuff. You guys see me use Starbond a lot. I bought it directly from their website from uh, another coupon that I had found somewhere else but you can get it off of Amazon and I have it linked in my Amazon store. So here I'm starting and I'm gonna place the exact same thing we did originally on the front edge, but we're gonna put it on the back edge and I'm hoping that this is, and it does work, this is going to be our save all and the actual proper placement of weight that we needed for the idea that I had. That was a long sentence, it was probably a run on, there should have been a period and some other punctuation in the middle of that. <laughs> but if you're if you get what I'm trying to say here, I really wasn't looking at weight disbursement, the differential, and the, let's add, insert large words here, whatever needs to be <laughs> said. It, you guys saw it didn't work, this made it work. So I'm gonna show you here, I put more uh, Starbond on the outside and then just spray the accelerator and it works like a dream. It really does work like a dream. I really like how the arrangement turned out. And now you can see she hangs normally. My vision has come to life. I just had to take an extra few steps and frustration before I got there. Remember guys, that struggle bus is always at my house in front of my craft room. Should you ever miss your stops, be sure to come over to my place and pick up right where you left off because the struggle bus has a permanent pickup and drop off right outside my craft room. So I like how it turned out. Everything worked out. Tell me what you guys think. This is a short little video. It's just a little extra one. I wanted to throw this cute little cake pan in just to show you guys different ideas and wreath alternatives. And this is just what my crazy crafty spring fever pink brain wanted to do. I have another Valentine's video that will be coming to you and then we'll be going into some more spring farmhouse goodness in the next one after that. So you guys let me know. I have a coffee page. I want to thank every single one of you for donating to me. Every time that you do, you make my heart soar and you help me keep my channel going. If you're not able to monetarily support, that is never a problem. It's never required. I love every single one of you more than I can possibly say in words. So basically, many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.